There are many control scenarios where the actuator is either on or off, but can't go to fractional values in between. One example of that is a thermostat in the house that's hooked up to a heater or furnace of some sort. So for example, here is our set point at 63, our current temperature is 71. When the temperature gets below this value within a certain tolerance, it's going to turn on the heat and then it'll turn it off again once it reaches a little bit above the set point. We're going to talk about on-off control and actually program that with an Arduino today and the temperature control lab. If you'd like to follow along with the source code, it's right here. I'll also put it in the description of the video, but it'll have all of the instructions on how to run and, and how to program the Arduino. All right, so uh, the very first thing that we need to do is just run this script. That's going to take about four minutes to run, and it's going to have the on-off control embedded right here with this line, just an if statement. If it's below 40 degrees, then we're going to turn on the heater to 100%, else it's going to be off. Now the temperature control lab can actually do uh, fractional values in between, and it emulates these fractional values by using pulse width modulation. So for example, if you need to turn on the heater to 20%, you might leave it on for about 20% of the time. And this uh, cycles on off very quickly. It doesn't damage the power transistors here. But uh, in a heater furnace system or air conditioning or other on off type actuators, we would not, uh, we'd wear them out quicker if we cycled them frequently. So let's just go through and review this code for the on off. Uh, we're going to first of all import TC Lab, we'll import time, we'll connect to the TC Lab, and then we'll open up a data file, a data.csv file in write mode, and then put in a header with time Q1 and T1, and then we'll write uh, 0, 0, and then the current temperature. 0 for time, 0 for Q1, and then uh, get the current value. We'll close that file now. We'll open it later. And we'll create a loop for I in range, and then we'll do 239 cycles, 240 cycles here, 0 to 239. And then that'll be our uh, four minute test. We'll sleep for one second, and then we will get our current T1 value. That's our temperature. And then we will insert Q1 equals 100 if the temperature is less than or equal to 40 degrees, else it'll be zero. So this is how you can write an if statement on one line with Python. And this will be our on-off control. Then we'll set our heater value. We'll just use that Q1 value from up above. And then we'll print uh, the current time. Let me go just lengthen this a little bit so it'll fit. All right, we'll pr print the current time, Q1, and T1 values. Then we'll open up the data file again. We'll do this in append mode. And then we will write another row with the time, Q1, and T1 values. And then we'll close it. And then finally, after we finish with the loop, we'll close the connection to the TC lab. So let's go ahead and just run this, um, the on-off control and collect our data. This will take about four minutes to run and while we're doing that we'll talk about some other things that we're going to do with the data. Alright, so I'll go ahead and start it running. Just make sure it's going to connect and it's uh, reading good values. Alright, so every second you can see the heater one is on to 100% right now and then we'll just uh, watch this. It'll go for about four minutes. I'll minimize it right now We'll plot it later. All right, um, let me come back here to the exercise. What we want to do now is take this data and we'll use a graphical method to fit a second order model to the closed loop response for the on off control. And we're going to find three parameters kp, zeta, and tau s. We're not going to use dead time in this case. If we were, we would. Um, I'm going to replace this with T set point as well instead of the Q value, okay? Because that's the thing that we're stepping. But if we did have uh, a delay here, it would be time minus 
theta p. I just put that in here. Uh, and this one would be t1 just of time. I wouldn't have a delay for this one or any of these other derivatives. Okay, so this is going to be our input. It's going to be the temperature of the set point, And then we're going to try to predict, based on that, what the t1 value is. But we don't have any delay here, so we don't need... Uh, we can just have t set point. All right, uh, we're going to follow the following steps to obtain a graphical approximation of a step response. And this is going to oscillate, so it's going to be an underdamped system. Our zeta is going to be less than 1, but greater than 0. We'll first of all find the delta t re from the set response, a delta t of the set point, and then we'll come up with our gain value. And then we'll calculate a damping factor zeta from overshoot or decay ratio. I'll show you some of those formulas in just a second. And we'll calculate tau s from rise time, peak time, or the period. So we can get those um, from any of these that are shown here in the plot. The rise time is going to be when it hits the final steady state value right here. Uh, the peak time is going to be up here. The period is going to be trough to trough. Or a half of a period is going to be when uh, this starts, okay, kind of in this region. That's one half of the t period time or this is a full period time right here. Uh, down to the bottom trough, that's again a uh, half uh, period right here. Okay, so it's going to be peak to peak is period. Uh, you want to be able to calculate things like overshoot ratio. That's going to be this B right here divided by A, which is right here. Uh, so we want to be able to use these formulas to be able to graphically determine what are the parameters of the second order model. All right, so for an underdamped uh, system, it's between zeta of, of z less than 1 or greater than 0. An analytical solution to this, to a step response in the set point, for example, is going to be given by this formula. Now you can see in this formula a couple things. We have cosine and sine in here and then a few of these coefficients, the parameters that we determine, tau s and zeta, are in here as well. Okay, so we're going to use this formula right here to uh, calculate an analytical solution once we've done the graphical fit just so we can compare how well our graphical fit compares to the actual data. All right, um, let me come into uh, here and let's do, um, the, this is the plot that I gave you on uh, in here to generate the plot. Then we're just going to extend this and add the solution to it. So after our data is finished, we'll run this other script here to show the plot, but also add our analytical solution. So I want to read the data CSV file, and then I have my delta set point is going to be 20. And then, um, all right, I'm going to, I think we'll just have to wait, because uh, we still need to get some of the other parameters for this. Uh, for example, the next one is going to be the, the delta T1. We don't know what that's going to be, if it's going to go up to the set point or maybe a little bit higher. Uh, in steady state. So uh, let's go ahead and just wait until, let me see how close this is done. Oh, it is done right here. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and do this. I'll just go ahead and grab uh, this plot right here. Okay, you want to use the git code link down in the bottom right in order to be able to uh, grab just the raw all right, and then I will do IDLE, or you could save it as a text file and run it, uh, you know, from the command prompt or in a Jupyter notebook. I'll just create a new file here with IDLE, and this will be plot uh, data dot py. All right, I'll just put it on my desktop, and let's go ahead and just plot this, and then we'll be able to look at 
some of the values um, and be able to see how this responded. So uh, the very first thing that we want to look at is where does this level out in steady state? And it looks like it heats up when the heater turns on when it's below this temperature. It's only below for a little bit, but then it turns on the heater and there's a little bit of a lag here. Uh, and so it heats up even further, it cools off, barely touches the 40 degree set point, and then heats up again and cools off. So because it heats up faster than it cools down, then uh, we actually spend a little bit more time above the set point than below it. So I'm going to say we level off right about here. You can see down in the bottom right, uh, you can see some values as I kind of scroll uh, through it, it averages about you know maybe 41 degrees Celsius, maybe just a little bit lower, but it's about 41. All right, so we're going to include that um, as a delta T1. We'll just say that's uh, 21 degrees. We started with 20, and then we went up to 41. All right, uh, the next thing that we want to do is the overshoot. So let's see if we can get the overshoot ratio here we had um, let's see I'm going to put this over here all right so we have the total change which is 21 all right and you know I'm going to save this just so it's a little easier to write on it um, all right I'll save it here and then just throw it back into uh, and minimize some of these get them out of the way and okay I'm going to come down here to figure one here it is and I'll copy it back in here and then let's just go ahead and and work with it over here and be able to pick out some of these values with the pen alright so um, we have overshoot here's our our final steady state right here uh, we have this value which is B divided by A. Alright, so B divided by A, it's going to be about uh, 3. Okay, that's about 3 degrees Celsius, and A is going to be equal to 21. Alright, so our overshoot is about 3 over 21. Um, or I'm going to put in some more specific values. If I scroll over it, I can see more specific values um, on on where it went. Okay, so these are all just estimates. It's a graphical fitting method, so it's okay if it's off by a little bit. And I'm just going to put in the overshoot uh, there. All right, then I have uh, the time to the peak, the very first peak. And here you can see it's about 88 or so. All right, uh, or 86 right here all right so there's uh, 86 and then I'm gonna have KP which is going to be the uh, Delta T1 divided by the Delta set point and then I'm gonna compute uh, some other things here that I need to be able to get my let me get back to these formulas here uh, you know what? I'm gonna come back here to the web page and grab those formulas the graphical method to fit a second order model, if you just select this link right here, it's going to take you to some of those formulas and guide you through how to fit this. Okay, so I'll put this over here. And then let's just, um, as we're typing this out, we'll just use some of these formulas to get our uh, tau s and our, o, our uh, zeta value from the overshoot. All right, and back here I have uh, this quantity right here that I want to compute. And I'm going to call that LNOS2. And so I'm going to use mp.log. That is the natural log. And I'll do OS, and then I'll put the squared outside of that. And you don't want to square OS inside here. Uh, that would be incorrect. All right, and then I'll have zeta. And let's just do mp square root ln os2 divided by mp dot pi, and we'll square that plus ln os2. 
And there's our zeta value, our tau s value. We're going to use, uh, we can either use this one right here, or we could use this one for the period. Uh, you know, either one. Let's use TP uh, for this one, the peak time. And that's going to be a square root of 1 minus zeta squared. And we'll divide by pi. And then, um, okay, KP, zeta, and tau s. We want to see those values. So let's go ahead and print them, these new values that we calculated. And so there's our graphical fit. Okay, we've taken values from the peak time, the rise time, the period, um, the K ratio, the overshoot ratio, other things we can use to be able to graphically fit just from picking out a couple points in our plot. Okay, now we have an analytic solution as well. Uh, this is going to be the one that we saw uh, before. Let me go ahead and put this over to the side just so we can see it. All right, there it is. And now we want to say that we're going to use the time from our data. Those are going to be the values from the data frame. We'll just get our t0 value. This is going to be in deviation variable form. So I need to be able to know where I'm starting so I can add that value to all of the data points when I'm done calculating it. Okay, I'm just going to use the very first value of t1. And then let's calculate, uh, because there's a lot of repeated factors in here, I'm going to have mp dot square root and 1 minus zeta squared. Okay, I'll do another one, which is b is t divided by tau s. And then we have uh, cosine. All right, uh, cosine. And that's going to be a times b. And I'll make another one, d, and that's going to be zeta divided by a. All right, and let's see times mp dot sine, I'll just do this whole other right term, a times b, and then we'll have t1, this is where the final expression, I've just built up individual pieces here, it's going to be kp times delta set point, times, and then I'll have 1 minus, and then I'll put in um, minus zeta b, and then c plus d, and then the very final thing that I need to do is add in the t naught value. All right, there's my analytical solution. It's a little bit complicated, but it, you know, breaking it down into five lines makes it much more readable and easier to implement. Now we want to add this to the plot, and so I'll go ahead and just create a new line here. Um, let's distinguish between the the measured value, so I'm going to add measured right here, and then let's add a new plot with our predicted T1 value. All right, um, let's see, let's go ahead and run this now. Uh, we're just going to run the uh, this final solution. You can also get it just from the website. I'm going to go back to that. I selected that link. Go back uh, down here at the bottom. If you didn't follow along with all of that, you can go to Show Solution, and I kind of walk through the same thing. You can grab this code and run it if you'd like to verify uh, what I had. All right, so I'll just create this new one and edit it. And okay, there it is. And let's run this one now. All right, so there's our solution, the analytical solution uh, that we got from the graphical fitting. You can see it, it does an okay job hitting the points that we had picked out, like the peak time, uh, the overshoot, uh, but it does a fairly poor job for other points that are here, and also capturing the oscillation, uh, a little bit of the decay, although there's not as much as a second order system would indicate. All right, and, and this will likely continue to oscillate uh, where a second order system is going to decay out. All right, so there's our solution. The next one that we're going to do is try to fit uh, this with an optimization approach. So instead of just looking at a couple points to fit, we're going to be looking at all of the points and then adjusting those parameters to best fit this response.